Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Ray, and this one we're going to be mainly talking about CV positioning. Uh, I have three games from my recent live stream, and that's why you see all these overlays on the, on the screen. But um, yeah, we're going to be mainly looking at my carrier positioning, my thought process, and some tips I can provide to possibly try to help you guys out and um, you know with your with your positioning of of your carrier. So. Carrier positioning, why is it important? What are the benefits of it? The most obvious one is it reduces your flight time from your carrier to your target or wherever on the map you're trying to head to. That's like the most obvious thing people really think about. <clears throat> so a lot of times when you see a carrier reversing or a carrier pushing up, a lot of people tend to think, oh, he's just trying to change the, the, the distance of his carrier from his opponents. But a lot of things, a lot of other benefits actually come into play here um, <clears throat> are actually a, a result of proper carrier positioning. And the one thing that it actually greatly benefits um, carriers is the fact that you can get your strikes off at a better angle um, more efficiently and without, um, the, without the amount of effort that you have to put in, into it. And what I mean by this is, let's say, let's say I'm positioned um, in a certain way where the enemy has to push towards me. Okay, they're going to be bowing to me. My carriers, the the, the very front of my carriers, um, going to be pointing towards the enemy, and then the enemy has to push towards me, and I have an island in between us both. So what this means is, um, let's say I'm playing something like a midway. Okay, like in this example. And I wanna, I wanna attack the targets that are coming towards me. The squadron that benefits the most in this kind of situation is gonna be my dive bombers because my dive bombers, it only needs to be at a vertical angle instead of um, requiring the enemy ship to be horizontal. I, they don't have to be broadside to me. They could be bow in. They could be stern in. This, uh, this means that I don't have to change my flight course at all i just had to go straight in hold w and then attack the target like that it, it's the fastest way it's the easiest way right i don't have to worry about any flak spawning out of nowhere all that kind of stuff i know where the enemy is i could, I could just go straight there from a to b the next benefit that you can get with a good carrier position is being able to farm potential damage now, what I mean by this is, if you have an island, if you're set up parallel to an island, and the enemy team is trying to push you off from the other side of that island, even if they get their shells over the island, a lot of the shells will be hitting your flight deck. And carriers at tier 10 tend to have incredibly strong flight deck armor, which results in a lot of bounces from the incoming AP shells and some HE shells. Battleship HE tends to um, overmatch some carrier's flight decks. For example, Audacious going against like a Conqueror. A lot of those uh, moments, uh, you can't really do much about it, but a lot of battleships tend to fire AP. A lot of cruisers tend to fire AP in some moments. And if you position properly, there are shells that lob over the island still will hit you, but it'll deal very minimal damage. Another thing is you won't be spotted as easily from the carrier or any of the incoming enemy ships. Carrier has to fly either in front of you or behind you or fly over you to really give any type of spotting onto your ship for his team. So those are pretty much the benefits that a lot of people don't think about but are very important to think of. Um, you know, very aggressive positioning, which is to minimize the amount of flight distance. The very um, supportive position where you can be pushing up with your team, um, providing immediate spotting, providing anti-air with your own ship. And then there's a very defensive positioning where you hide by an island, enemy team can't spot you, they can't shoot you, they can't effectively deal with you. And that's, those are three very aggressive, very strong um, positioning uh, styles that you can take so now um we're gonna be looking at this game now i did talk for quite a bit but hopefully i can catch up with what happened so 
in this game, I'm gonna go back a little bit here. <clears throat> in this game, I immediately start to head towards the, the A side. This is an example of me supporting my team's push. Right, I, I'm trying to hold back a flank. I'm trying to provide as much anti-air as possible, but also keeping in mind of my concealment and my air concealment. So this way, I when the enemy a woman tries to attack my teammates, he has to fly either into my anti-air bubble, or I can drop a fighter very easily to cut him off. Because the in a woman, the, the in woman requires very long distances straight distances of open water and that's the type of play style that is really weak on this map and what i mean by this is you'll see later on as the game progresses i move towards a side you can see my ships are already leaving but i mean i they turn around so it shouldn't be it's not much of an issue later on but my position that i'm trying to take right now Let's say the Vincent and Venetia turn around, they're, they're hovering around here, right? Right outside A cap, supporting my DD, and I'm positioning my carrier right here. What this means is if the Immelman tries to fly over and drop my Vincent, he needs to fly either all the way around. Look at where he's positioned. He's positioned closer to C cap to support his flank. So if he wants to deal with my Shimakaze, he has to fly all the way around on the one line to spot him and then deal damage to my Vincent, my Venezia, or even the Worcester. Or he has to fly through B cap and cut over in between these these two openings here to get his skip bomber strike off. If I position right myself right here, he has to either focus me or fly through me to deal with my Vincent. So this is like the general position I like to take. It becomes an issue when C-Cap starts to push towards my side, but it's not an issue right now. You see here, I, I actually start to turn away because my Vincent, my Worcester, and my Venezia actually start to leave for some reason. So this is where I'm like, okay, the enemy team is already pushing up. Nevsky is here, Kremlin, FDG are already starting to push up. The Henri is doing Henri things on the border. So this is me taking um, preemptive measures turning away before it's too late because the carrier is very very immobile it's a very large ship it can't turn properly but when it gets its engines rolling and you go in a straight line you start to um, actually pick up some speed but actually turning is the, probably the biggest issue especially when you're dealing with autopilot because autopilot actually cuts your speed to half and then it puts you to full for some reason I don't understand why but um, I'm already starting to leave I told my Shimakaze div mate to leave with me so he doesn't get blapped by the incoming Nevsky and the and the Henri when the Nevsky has radar again. Um But as the match goes on, you see here, I'm like slowly starting to slow down because I don't want to leave this side open. I wanna sit here, so still support my A cap, but also prevent them from entering A side um to really make any um aggressive moves that'll win them the game. But that's pretty much what I do. I, I, I keep protecting ACAP, pressuring the Nevsky. I see my Venezia trying to go in as well, so I'm going to be trying to support him as much as possible. He's not spotted because he's smoking up. And the Nevsky already used radar, I believe, on the Shima earlier. So this is a really, really good push. So me spotting the Nevsky here really just kills him. You see the Sap just obliterates this guy. But uh, after I see this, I'm like, okay, it's time to go back in. The biggest threat on this side was the Nevsky. Um... Because he, if, once he pushes up, he pushes my Shima away, and that allows his teammates to push up too. Um, so I do turn around, my, my ship starts to turn around with me, and then that's how the game is pretty much won. I, I, I take a more supportive role, helping out my battleship, and my, my Worcester is also protecting him. And we just pretty much just steamroll this map after that. Like, this game is just a snowball after this. After we secure A cap, because of their Nevsky, um, their carrier can't do anything. Carrier is only focusing the Vincent right now, but I'm in a distance where I could drop fighters for them for my Vincent. And then if the Immelman wants to strike my Worcester or my Musashi, he has to go through B cap and then fly into our AA bubble. And mind you, tier 10 AA for carriers is probably one of the strongest things this game has ever seen. I don't know why. I don't know why carriers AA is so strong, but <laughs> it is what it is, right? Vincent's getting farmed here, but oh well. Um 
And this game is pretty much won after that. You can just see me trying to run it down, get as much po game uh, damage as possible because the game's pretty much over. Um, so yeah, there's pretty much game one. Let's go next. Go to the next game. Okay, and here we are. It's game number three, uh, number two, actually. In this game, I do um, I do misposition quite heavily because I don't. Uh, I, for some reason, I wasn't looking at the minimap to predict the incoming enemy DD push, um, rushing through A cap to B cap. They actually push straight in through with the help of Cyclone as well, and then they just run straight into me. Because I end up positioning by this island here, trying to support my div mates. Um, let's just skip forward just a little bit. So for this entire game, I don't move my carrier at all, because I'm already on my strong team side, and I want to help them, support them as much as possible to win this side, because this is their strong side, this is our strong side, so it's going to be an all-out uh, an all out brawl. Um, I am playing the Haku this game. So you can see me even after 3 minutes, 4 minutes, I don't move my carrier. My carrier is still in place, because there's no reason to. Right, I'm just doing as much damage, enough spotting as possible. Um, and then let's see here, 5 minutes later... I'm still in the same spot, 7 minutes, so let's jump forward to where I start to actually move my carrier, which is right here. Okay. So, moving my carrier now, after 7 minutes of the match starting. Let's look at the minimap. In the minimap, we have... Um, we cleared out most of their ships on this side. Me and my div mates are still alive here. I'm starting to push up to this island. Over on... what is this? F... no, G8, right? And their Holland is running, their St. Vincent is running, my Balao is pressuring their CV, and all that's left here is a Conde. I don't have to worry about anything. Now... I didn't take note of the fact that Cyclone was coming in in 10 seconds. This Cyclone actually kind of screwed me over because I was so confident that we had this game, um, even though I shouldn't have. I, I shouldn't have been. And look at the the score; it's f four down on both sides. The game is very, very um, even. It's very tied right now. Is either either teams win at this point? But I was so confident that we could really win this game that I was safe, but if you look on the minimap, Schlieffen is already pushing into B-cap. The Yu Yang is spotted now, heading towards the B-cap, and a 20, our, our 2501 is here, not really able to do much against the Destroyer, so I'm, I'm, he's just going to be going... Um, he's over here on the left, but he's going to be submerging into the water, and he's going to go straight past the DDs. The Zorki and the Yu Yang are both heading here, and for some reason, I don't I don't take notice of this. I'm, I don't know if it's because I'm so focused on this and I'm tunnel visioned, or I'm just talking to chat the entire time. I really don't know. But that's that's the moment where I pretty much threw this game because I do end up dying to the destroyers. So you, you see here, we're trying to deal with the Conde. Conde is dead. I move up, and my diff mate. If you, if you saw there, my diff mate actually pings me to rotate around or try to avoid this island because. Um, now that we dealt with the Conde, we can actually look at the map. We have a little breather. But we see here the Schlieffen, the Zorki, and the Yu Yang. At this point, it's already too late because I'm already stuck in position. And Autopilot or my carrier would not be able to make this sharp turn to the right to go on the other side of the island towards Sea Cap. I'm just dead here, pretty much. I'm, 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 I'm done for. Um, but this is one of those moments where... You really have to think about how an island can really screw you over if you try to camp there and trying to help, you know, trying to take a more aggressive positioning. Because for me, I took this spot because I didn't, I honestly didn't expect both the Yu Ying and the Zorki here. You'll see in a little, in a, in a little bit, the, the Yu Ying is also here. Yeah, there he is. And the Shrifen is here, but Shrifen can't shoot me because of the Cyclone. Um... But if, if I position on on the right side of this island here, I would have been completely safe. Because then what this meant was, I would have still been away, um, safe, difference, safe distance from the Schlieffen, and I could have just kept hugging the border, or the, um, the 910 line. And I could just stay dark, I could keep running away. And then I could have help, had the support of my two div mates, but unfortunately, I end up throwing the game. So, you know, this is one of those moments where you notice too late, and then you're just pretty much screwed. Um, this whole entire match, I thought that I was going to be okay. I take a more aggressive position, but I failed to realize that the enemy DDs were coming straight towards me. And after, at this point, is I was already dead. 
Um, unless I, I could have manually reversed here. You see me actually using autopilot, autopilot to hopefully try to reverse and my carrier is already starting to slow down, but um, it just takes so long for you to end up trying to slow down. I'm full reversing now, but it's it, 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 this is just really sad, <laughs> really sad to see. Because um, we actually could have won this game too, but I mean, I die here, but this is what not to do, okay? You really want to take a look at the mini-map, try to figure out how the enemy team is going to position, what is going to be affecting the map, whether like cyclones, snowstorm, anything like that, and then try to keep track of the enemy DDs or anyone who can potentially try to rush you and ambush you, submarines included. Um, so yeah, that's something to keep notice of. So not much to really talk about this game other than me mispositioning, taking an aggressive approach, but not keeping the DDs into account and which resulted in my death so all right so game three um this map is going to be me and my shimikaze together now this map it's pretty standard to take a this is one of those moments where taking a a early um a early position on your carrier and setting up a tent to pretty much make your campsite and not being you know being in immobile a, a unmovable target is going to be very helpful it like I said in the very beginning of the video, it um, mitigates it. it mini not mitigates, sorry. It minimizes the amount of effort that you have to put into your your flight path to effectively reach your target for the best possible outcomes. In this case, it's going to be me perma spotting the northeast side of the map, which is also where their carrier is. I'll, I'll, I'll talk about um, fighting a Nakimov in just a second, but. I actually end up positioning over here on the C5 island and what this is what this does is it lets me be protected by my islands it lets me stay uh, concealed for the most part while also giving me an escape route where I can just start turning around if needed or I can run through in between these two islands here and running away. I have a lot of island cover here so where I prefer to say leave my carrier at and if things get start going downhill then I can just run away now <clears throat> I want to talk about this really quick dealing with a Nakimov I know a lot of people are afraid of fighting a Nakimov because of how strong the carrier is <clears throat> but one thing you have to remember is the Nakimov has a very very vulnerable broadside even at range battleships can nuke the thing just immediately if it gets a good shot okay more than any other tier 10 carrier that we have in the game Nakimov is that easy to kill. Uh, the carrier's air consumption, I believe, is 12 to 13 kilometers, some, somewhere around there. So if you do catch it um, and spot it, you can actually perma, perma spot it with your fighters. And it because it turns like a brick, uh, think of, for example, a, uh, a Kremlin. The Kremlin is a very long and large target. It's not able to really turn effectively. So you see me here. I uh, see me here. I spot the Nakimov and I drop a fighter. And what this fighter will do is look at my da my spotting damage number. I have eight thousand right now. As the match progressive, this fighter will last for another forty five seconds, and this one fighter will keep this Nakimov perma spotted for the entire time until I come back with my own squadron to finish him off with my dive bombers. Now I'm already up to twelve k. Once that shell hit, that salvo hits. You go 41k. So that's how I know, oh my god, this Nakimov just got obliterated. Look at his HP, 12k already. You don't even have to strike the Nakimov. You just spot the thing, he just dies. He's making an issue. He's making a mistake of just sailing straight towards this island. Because this island is a very strong position for a Nakimov. So knowing how the other carrier would want to prefer positioning or playing, um, it'll help you so much. So that's why usually I, re I recommend a lot of people to um, try to think about how the other carrier player would think. Not just from carriers in general, but carrier specific um, thought process. Because that will help a lot. Later on, I can try to do like a Nahima series or carrier specific, um, a ship specific uh, videos. Try to get like the thought process down. And he's just dying. Like, I have 94k spotting damage right now. <laughs> it's only been four minutes, right? So um, this is one of those instances where I can just fly straight towards the enemy team, permalite the carrier, kill him, okay? And then go back to doing whatever I want to do on this side. This At this point, the game is already over. 
They have two ships down, including a third one, which is the enemy carrier. They have a fourth one down now. Amagi just died. Um, this game is pretty much won. No one can shoot me here. The battleships can't shoot me. No one can spot me, really, because there's this island in the way. But I'm, this is a position where I love to take, as is on this map. And mainly because I'm, I'm protected. This is a, a more defensive position that also gives me a more aggressive approach to how I want to get my strikes off. And you gotta always remember, it's not just about getting your strikes off, it's not always about the damage numbers, but also being a more supportive, um, being in a more supportive role when needed, which is in the, in earlier spotting the spotting the Nekimo in this moment, because I drop my fighters down the moment I spot the guy. So he gets spotted, I drop my carrier in a safe location right here, away from all this AA, and then this guy just dies. And not only am I spotting the the the, the, the Nahimov, I'm also spotting every other battleship that's on this side, even the uh, the Amagi that's on the south, um, going to the south cap, or sorry, the, the south flank, and then the um, the destroyer. Um, every single moment that my fighter like hovers around him, so this is just so much supporting that you can do without actually having to like fly over to spot them with your own squadron. You could just use your fighters. Um, but yeah, I do position um, in this island for pretty much the rest of the game because no one can touch me, but I have a perfect flight path and such an e such a safe uh, safe flight to my next target, which is the Hawk in, in this moment. I think he just dies before my torpedoes even hit him. Um, and the rest is just destroyers and submarines, so... This is like a, a really good thing to think about, like... How you want to position your carrier, planning ahead thinking how the other team will be positioning um, two steps ahead of time. You don't want to make reactive plays um, because because your carrier takes so long to get to a certain destination, you really want to be um, making the moves as the match progresses. You really want to make the moves almost immediately on, on instinct. There's less time that you're spending trying to get to a position is going to be more time that you could be striking a target gives you more opportunities that way so these are some examples that i've uh i really want to give to you guys regarding carrier positioning i can go more in depth with some hyper aggressive spots um like when i play the russian carriers i usually tend to push really really hard on them but um i feel like that should be just another video for itself with like carrier specific play styles and such so um, but yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, that's pretty much all there is to talk about. If you have any questions, just let me know in the comments. I'll try to answer everything that I can. But um, this is actually take two. My take, uh, first take version of this game was, uh, it was um, I was actually, I don't know what happened. I had to re-record re everything. So um, but yeah, you guys supporting this series really means a lot to me. Hopefully these videos are helpful and um, you guys can share this around with anyone who is interested in playing carriers um you know that's why you know, i don't see anyone else really doing content like this so um that's why i'm trying to pump out as much as possible whenever i can so uh yeah that's gonna be the end of this series or end of this video rather i'll see you guys in the next video let me know what you want to see and um, i have a list of things i in mind so um hopefully we we'll try to try to get to them as fast as possible yeah i'll see you guys in the next one